And then we got the Silent Hill transmission. We had Konami's presentation. I thought it was much better because it was slower. It took its time. It showed off the atmosphere. The fog looked great. Um, Silent Hill looked great great in my opinion and then i started hearing this this chatter on twitter complaining about the games uh, complaining about the game and the character models and stuff and I, at first i kind of had that reaction that a lot of people had like oh god here we go i actually i actually completely agree with the people that are upset about this i i actually do the first thing was angela so this was the the first character that we saw in the trailer like i thought james looked fine but when i saw angela i was like damn like they you know chubby cheeks like they 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 put some weight on her and they did they nerfed her tits they made her hips wider and then they gave her this chubby face the reason why I like her original character model better is because she looks like a girl that would have been very beautiful, but went through something really traumatic and then maybe got addicted to drugs. And I kind of like that look. This one right here, I, I don't understand this redesign. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Saladino. There's something almost, I don't know, schizophrenic or classically paranoid about the way Konami and Bloober team are going about promoting this Silent Hill 2 remake. So, in the middle of the night the other night, uh, it was like 3 in the morning where I am, they released this new story trailer. And the first thing that stood out to me was how bad Maria's voice sounds. And I don't want to sound like I'm complaining just to be complaining. But I genuinely think she sounds terrible. James? Honey? Did something happen to you after we got separated in that long hallway? Are you confusing me with someone else? Are you confusing me with somebody else? Do you want to get a coffee? Do you want to talk and have a coffee? <laughs> I was thinking, though, that at least they listened to fan feedback after the Silent Hill transmission back in May when they had that extended gameplay reveal, and we finally saw that derpy Karen-looking Maria and that Derpy Laura, and that awful Angela. <laughs> now, I mentioned in a video, previous video, how bad Maria looked and how her new modern audience design defeats the entire point of the character. But I never did get around to roasting Angela. So many people have already done it, but, but the thing is, I didn't see the David Duchovny or Fox Mulder resemblance until someone tweeted it. You know, the side-by-side -side pictures of the two. <laughs> For me, when I first saw uh, Angela, and I heard her talk, the first thing I thought was Chloe from 24, speaking of Fox TV shows. Why not? You'll have to talk to Tony so that Tony can tell Adam and Adam can give them to me. You're kidding me, right? Nope. Adam's completely anal about that kind of stuff and he hates women. Just do it that way from now on, okay? I can't read minds, Jack. You're just gonna have to spell it out for me, otherwise this relationship won't Damn it, Chloe! And I hate how the usual suspects do this thing where they try to shame people for rightfully criticizing Bloober's terrible Angela design by going, Oh, you're mad that an assault victim is not fuckable enough? And it's like, shut up. But, but, if you're a Silent Hill fan and you say, I don't know why you changed her design. I don't know why you l changed her design. You get shit like this from this ass. I'm sorry the traumatized abuse victim is not bangable in your Silent Hill 2 remake. And I hate disingenuous arguments like this. I hate it so, so much. So I don't like the conversation around this. I really don't like this guy's fucking tweet and I don't like people that talk like this. It's not about her being bangable. Nobody wants to bang Angela. They just want the remake to be faithful to the original. And when you see this, and then you see this, you think to yourself, that's not faithful to the original. And then you see modern audiences and you go, oh, okay, I know what you're doing. But apparently you're just upset you can't f the abuse victim. And then you see that this comes from an extra in the award winning Silent Hill Ascension. So this is somebody that has a history of making bad decisions. It's hilarious how you have the dumbest people who slither into this space obsessed with things that have nothing to do with why people play games or why characters should be appealing or visually arresting or scary or grotesque, as opposed to being just ugly and off-putting. Just because Angela is an assault victim doesn't mean she should be ugly and off-putting. But this goes back to what I've been saying about how these activist assholes have to make female characters ugly and masculine because they know that women are naturally attractive to men. It doesn't have anything to do with sexualization or objectification. 
or the male gaze as this nefarious evil thing. And the only way they know how to stop a woman from being attractive is by deliberately making her ugly and mannish. They tell on themselves when they turn women into trans women. Excuse me, I... <gasps> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I no, was it's just... okay. I didn't mean to scare you. Excuse me. <gasps> I'm sorry. I, I was just... It's okay. I didn't mean to scare you. So, with this new story trailer, Maria doesn't look as goofy as she did before. But I'm starting to think it's not that Bloober team changed her looks because of feedback. I think they just changed your face in this scene to try and make it creepier. I don't think it really works. For creepy, I guess, yeah, maybe. But the sex appeal is just gone. The outfit is too busy. Like, this, the fact that she's wearing this jacket, and I know, I guess, it's supposed to be functional since it's cold in Silent Hill or whatever. But the tattoo is in a bad spot since she's covered up now. It should be on her midriff. But they decided to make this stupid choice to give her this jacket and everything. So now they have this tattoo in this silly spot. And then... Besides Maria, who does at least look better in some way in this famous prison cell scene, you got Mary looking like some old hag. <laughs> and you've got Eddie looking like Chris Chan's spirit animal. He looks evil right off the bat. In the original, he looks boyish and inoffensive. He sounds boyish and inoffensive. So when he does start doing this creepy act and he starts acting weird and you know, it gets surprising. It gets t like you have this tension because it's like, what's wrong with you, Eddie? You were seeing pretty chill before. In the original, I had no problem seeing him and Laura together. I'll wait here. I hate bowling. I didn't come here to play, you know. Hurry back, okay? So what'd you do? Robbery? Murder? Nah, nothing like that. Huh, you're just a gutless fatso. What'd you have to say that for? I thought you said the cops were after you. No, I just ran because I was scared. I don't know what the cops are doing. But if you did something bad, why don't you just say you are sorry? Now I don't want this pederast anywhere near this little girl. Even this gremlin version of Laura. So I was saying how schizo the marketing has been. They released the story trailer in the middle of the night, like I said. At least here in the States. And around the same time, they released this demo. You have game outlets and YouTubers showing the demo off and talking about how great the demo is. And all of it together, the trailer and the demo, is, it seems like information overload. And I think they probably felt like they had to do it that way because of the problems they've been having with the trailers. Still seems like they should have spread things out though. I mean, the game isn't coming out until October. But I guess they didn't want to just put out the trailer this time because it doesn't look or sound good. At least not to me. I don't like Maria's voice. I don't like her face. Eddie looks terrible. <laughs> Mary looks as old as Tess in the Last of Us remake. Quote unquote remake. Cops overlooking the Capitol building, for example, like just the God, I of fresh air when you go. Look at Tess back here, looking like somebody's grandma. She doesn't look like, like I feel like they made the, the women look ugly or a purpose. They're beautiful, but you feel the environment. You feel the environment in a much more visceral way. She looks like somebody's granny. Rooftops overlooking the Capitol building, for example. Hey, Joe, you make sure that little Ellie girl crosses without falling off. I got bit by the way, but I won't say anything yet. Well, like just I don't think I didn't notice, Bloober Team, how you didn't show Angela's face in this trailer. <laughs> I don't know. It's all just off to me. But the demo, the demo does admittedly look good for the most part. I mean, James's movements are stiff and robotic when he walks, but overall it feels like if they could fix the faces, fix James's movements, 
change Maria's design, make her look fuckable, which, despite these stupid feminists infesting games, Maria is supposed to be Miss Male Gaze. This could be the kind of remake that even if it isn't as good as the original, you could at least enjoy playing, like with the Resident Evil remakes. Although I still think the opening in the restroom is too overly dramatic. So there's been a lot of talk about how Bloober's Silent Hill producer has asked fans to please give the remake a chance. Please give, give me another chance. And it's kind of being framed as if this Pietor Babiano gentleman is responding to the backlash to the Maria and Angela redesigns and the whole modern audience tweet by Konami. But I don't think that's it. When you read the article from Rolling Stone, it's really in reference to Bloober's terrible reputation when it comes to making horror games that were already obviously inspired by Silent Hill. You have this paragraph here. Anyway, Babino, Barbarino appreciates fans' constructive criticism, which he says has so far been invaluable in refining our project before its release. Though Babino also stresses that Blooper prioritizes a supportive work environment where designers can focus on their creative work with peace of mind which requires shutting their ears to gamers' voices sometimes. <laughs> Got this little picture of uh, Pyramid Head. Mess up Pyramid Head and fans revolt, Konami, says the caption. He's not talking about criticisms of Maria and Angela. And to go even further, I'm pretty sure the modern audience assurance from Konami, as well as these terrible redesigns of Angela and Maria, are actually a result of criticism by journos and woke and woke adjacent YouTubers that have been attacking Bloober for their writing, as well as how they handle things like mental health and assault, to get back to that again. So this video in particular, I think, really went in on Bloober team regarding the treatment of assault. The guy in this video even had a friend of his who played the game write an entire piece about it. And he read the piece out on his video. And not to get into spoilers for the medium, Essentially, the friend talked about, as a victim of assault, they didn't like the bleak message of the game, as well as the almost sympathetic portrayal of an abuser, since that abuser was also a victim of abuse, and how the story of the game didn't provide a more, I don't know, cathartic, I guess, more therapeutic release for the characters. And so this YouTuber's friend summed up their part of the video by saying, look, I'm a victim of abuse, and this bothered me. But I can only imagine what other people who went through worse things and who are even more triggered would feel about the message in the game. And the YouTuber guy, he pretty much summed up the video by saying, hey, look, we're not trying to censor a blooper team and the medium. And we're not trying to say that it shouldn't exist. We're just saying it sucks that it does exist because it makes victims of assault and mental health and all this stuff makes them feel bad because they're not handling it in a certain sensitive way. And it's like, it's wrapped up in this social media thing that the thing is, okay, so the medium is a horror game. You're talking about a horror game. People play horror games for the darkness, the thrill, the danger. Horror is one of the last places you're supposed to expect as a safe space. And if you're someone who's gone through abuse, you go to therapy to deal with that trauma and pain. You don't go to a video game expecting that to sort it out for you. If you can't handle horror games, then you shouldn't be playing horror. And that's not to say Bloober delivered good scripts or anything. I was somewhat interested in the medium, but then I was disturbed by the main heroine's lack of cake. So I never bothered to try it out. Plus, the gameplay didn't look all that great. I just think that Bloober got the message that they need to be more socially conscious in a social media way. And that's what I'm trying to say. So social media has had a really destructive effect on art and culture. Uh, mental health, representation, diversity, inclusion, equity, all of these things, these buzzwords, have more to do with small-minded, egotistical people online who suffer from main character syndrome than it does for actual gamers. So you have these people, these narcissists, who are lording it over art and entertainment as if it's supposed to go to them, as if art and entertainment is supposed to get up and walk over to them while they're just like reclining on the couch, stuffing their face with you're supposed to go to the hobby. 
You're supposed to engage or disengage based on what it does for you or doesn't do for you. It's not supposed to be this thing where some dumb feminist gets mad at a sexy woman and decides that games have to change because she's offended. And when fans of the game tell this idiot, hey, get lost. This is our hobby. I like it just as it is. That's why I'm involved in it. Like, that's why we're involved in it. And then all of a sudden, they call you evil. In this attitude, this mentality, not just an attitude and mentality, this, the, the actions that these people take, it doesn't just hurt fans. This actually hurts the developers, the artists, the creators. Because all of a sudden, what you're doing for yourself and for strangers now has to appeal to the smallest, most small-minded group of people who pretend that if you try to appeal to your actual customer base, you're an evil person too. And if you don't hire people who only care about their identity, you should be driven out of the field you work so hard to be a part of. We're seeing now all these studios being shut down because of DEI, the failures of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, or of Concord, of Flintlock, of Dustborn. We see the phenomenal success of Hogwarts Legacy and Black Myth Wukong, despite the attacks from the media and activists. It's the same pattern. Make the girls ugly, make the men, uh, you know, less masculine, and then say it's for modern audiences. It's for po That's what they're saying. When they say it's for modern audiences, they're saying it's for po And then the game comes out, and the Metacritic is dog shit, and it doesn't sell good, and then Konami says, oh, I guess you don't want more Silent Hill, when that wasn't the f problem. The problem is that the original game is a f masterpiece. All you had to do was stick to the blueprint that you already f had, but you're not. So this is other quote from that Rolling Stone article where they're talking to the uh, producer of uh, Silent Hill Remake. And he says, life is too short. And the process of creating games, I would say, is too long to make games that don't feel significant. Babino says, we want to create games that we would like to play ourselves and games that will be very important to our audience. So, if you really feel that way, Babino. Don't make games for modern audiences, and certainly don't brag about it. In fact, and I've said this before, if anyone wants to succeed in gaming, one of the best things they can do, besides having a good game, is tell everyone that they are against DEI. We tried to make all possible fans happy, but at the same time be very faithful to ourselves, Babino says. Ultimately, fans might not anticipate every change Bluebird decided to implement in its remake, but Babino says, I really hope that when people play for the first time, they will understand that the choices we made were the best possible. <sighs> Alright, well, we'll see. I hate his face. He just looks like he. <laughs> Joel stirs in his sleep. And that's really like the way we tried to push melting. the frontier of accessibility on this game. <laughs> and he looks all weak. Look at his little thin frame. <laughs> Shut up, Joel.